Now at nine, the lingering impacts of the December freeze still affecting some Muncie residents. Why these homeowners and renters are still frozen in their tracks. Ball State delivery robots have been en route since November. An update on their operations ahead of winter weather. And reconstruction begins at Muncie Central High School. What this $5.3 million renovation will entail. Plus, continued coverage on the death of Tyree Nichols. What prominent figures attended his celebration of life today? And speaking of winter weather, we're hitting a brief pause before a warm up. I'll tell you how big that bump is and more in my full forecast ahead. Delaware County's only live television newscast from Ball State University's Unified Media Newsroom. You're watching Newslink Indiana. Good evening. Thanks for being with us. I'm Alex Almanza. And I'm Maya Abramson. And we've had a lot of snow last week causing icy roads and snow closures, but some people are still dealing with the effects of the December freeze. Newslink's, Newslink Indiana's Madeline Kerr explains how we're still feeling the effects of the Arctic blast. The damage in there. Sophia Ruiz left her home in Muncie to be with her family for the holidays. But when she returned, her home was not the way she'd left it. It was a pipe burst because my roommates and I turned the heat off right before we uh, left for winter break, thinking it would save us money. Now, over a month later, she and her roommates are still without a place to live. Our kitchen was flooded. The ceiling um, that was on our kitchen had fallen. There was water coming, like, out of the ceiling. It was just a mess. Experts say that the best way to keep your pipes from freezing during those cold temperatures is to leave your faucet dripping. And to leave the cabinets under your sinks open. And if you are going to be away from home for an extended period of time, make sure to keep your heat on to prevent further damage to your home. It's something that happened and I can't change it and I wish I could go back and fix everything. Ruiz wasn't the only one that felt the effects of the storm. Dozens of other residents were also impacted by water damage due to pipes freezing. When we put all together on an itemized list, it was around $15,000 worth of damage to our property. Nugent was forced to move back home out of her apartment in the village promenade. And I'm still commuting back and forth an hour every single day. So um, hopefully within the next week I'm back, but I don't know. Uh, All that's left to do is wait. In Muncie, Madeline Sophomore, Kerr, Newslink, Indiana. Now Newslink, Indiana reached out to local plumbers for more information but uh, most were too busy for interviews due to the cold temperatures and the snow last week. And speaking of that snow, Ball State's delivery robots have been getting accustomed to the winter weather. Three months ago, Ball State Dining Services released Starship food delivery robots on campus. Since then, Director of Auxiliaries for University Dining Karen Adkins stated, quote, Our partnership with Starship robots have been very good, and the robots have done very well this winter. From students' perspective, the robots have been a nice perk on campus, although some wish they were able to use Dining Plus, Cardinal Cash, and Dining Cash to get deliveries during the winter months. I've never used them before. I've seen them all around campus and I think they're really cute, but I've never, never used them. Definitely, I've seen, like I said, I've seen them get stuck and their wheels kind of slide in the snow and I know that they had to shut down the uh, robot service for a day pretty recently here. I think it would be a lot more beneficial if we could use our meal swipes rather than having to go out in the winter weather. And Atkins stated, dining is continuing to work toward accepting student purchase options. And uh, yes. lots of, uh, you, know, you know, those tracks, especially the tires, they get stuck in the snow, you know, yeah. kind of have to get out. I wonder out. with our upcoming weather exactly how that will um, entail, you know. Right, yeah. yeah. Ryan, what's, uh, what's it looking like out there? Well, at least we lose that snow, but baby, it's cold outside. Just imagine being one of those robots. It's still chilly out there. Not as chilly as what we began the day with, though. 26 here in Muncie, upper 20s pretty much everywhere. But take a look at these teens in single digits all across the map. But as we see here, 
temperatures are going to be much better than that over the next 12 hours, where I have a low around in the lower 20s. That's much better. But we're going up from there yet with a snag. Frosty Friday expected. Windy, windy, windy weekend ahead. And then when are we going to hit near those 50s? Full forecast later on. If you've been downtown recently, you might see some changes at Muncie Central High School. Yeah, that's right. Construction for a new football stadium is underway right now. Music Indiana's Anna Chalker is live at the stadium with its timeline. Hey, Anna. Right now, this may just look like dirt and rubble to you, but crews are working every day to build the new Muncie Central High School football stadium. This $5.3 million project will bring a new track, turf field, lights, and seating on the home side here behind me. And even though the walls of the original 73-year-old stadium began to crumble, the school is making sure the Bearcat pride will still stand. For Barnell Vance, he remembers high school like it was yesterday. I had a lot of fun. It was joyful. Um, it was really good, really good. Through high school, Vance played football, and during his senior year, the team finally competed in sectionals. We, we were, were short on, you know, winning a lot of games, but the, our senior year, to play in the sectional, that was, that was pretty neat. But for many teams like his, the place they called home has been torn down. It was sad to know that they were tearing down all the years of, you know, seeing myself and um, other, other kids playing in the stadium. We're trying to make our facility modern for, uh, for our students, for our student athletes and for our spectators, um, for the community to come out. Muncie Central High School Stadium was built in 1950, and after not being able to keep the facility updated, school officials decided it was time for a change. Uh, it was one of those things where just the, the number of leaks and the things that the overall maintenance that had to go into the facility, it just made more financial sense to uh, to start fresh and, and invest in a brand new facility um, that we're working on right now. And the crew has wasted no time to start this project. The old stadium is currently gone, and uh, once they start the process of uh, filling in the hole and moving, moving dirt around and um, start setting everything for the new stadium, uh, we'll have a little bit better understanding of what that timeline looks like. When football returns next season, spectators will be sitting in new bleachers, cheering on the Bearcats on their new turf field. And with all the new additions to the stadium, uh, the, the Muscle Central Bearcat Pride is not going anywhere. Along with the lights, bleachers, and field in phase one, fans will also get a new press box, a multi-purpose building where they can buy tickets and concessions. Now in 2024, phase two will begin with a new locker room. Alex Amaya, it definitely does not feel like football season right now with these chilly temperatures, but in about six months, people will start filling this new stadium in shorts and t-shirts because school officials are saying that this project will be completed at the beginning of August, just in time for that first home football game. Live at Muncie Central, Anna Chalker, Newslink, Indiana. All right, now thank you, Anna. Now nationally, we continue to bring you coverage of the death of Tyrese Nichols. His celebration of life was held today in Memphis. In attendance, Vice President Kamala Harris, civil rights leaders, and the families of those who died at the hands of the police. Five former Memphis police officers are facing second degree murder charges in connection with his death. Prosecutors say they're looking at some, everyone involved and believe firmly in their case confident that we'll be able to uh, prove every element of every of those offenses charged to a jury beyond a reasonable doubt. Civil rights leaders now demanding action, accountability, and change nationwide. Well, there are new developments surrounding the case of former prosecutor Alex Murdaugh. They were presented at trial today. Prosecutors say that this video places Murdaugh at the scene when his wife and son were murdered. The video being from his son Paul Murdaugh's cell phone and takes place in the family kennels. Witnesses say the voices off screen belong to Alex, Maggie, and Paul Murdaugh. If that's true, it could undercut Alex Murdaugh's alibi. At the White House, President Joe Biden is planning to call on Congress to pass legislation targeting hidden fees across travel, entertainment, utility, and hospi hospitality industries. He's expected to announce his steps to slash those so-called, quote, junk fees at the Presidential Competition Council meeting today. 
Biden is also planning to announce a new rule to decrease credit card late fees. The White House says the proposal would reduce the average late fee from $30 to $8. In all, it would save Americans billions of dollars a year. Well, coming up, FedEx making layoffs. How many employees are being affected? Plus, find out just how many Bed Bath & Beyond stores are closing for good. Here's your sandwich, miss. Oh, thank you. And your burger. Awesome, thank you. And your bowl of boiling water, sir. After retiring from the NFL, I've been able to spend a lot more time coaching my daughter's basketball teams. It's something I love to do. Through our games and our tournaments, we see all types of coaching, good and bad. And it begs the question, do we really know who's coaching our kids? Do they have the proper training and screening it would take for me to be comfortable with my daughters playing for that coach? Our Youth Basketball Association made the decision to use trusted coaches to screen and train all of our coaches. I'm a trusted coach. Are you? So if one cat has four kittens who reproduce every six months, how many cats will there be in five years? <coughs> Who's got it? Is this, what is that? <coughs> Seriously. Who threw that? Cats are terrible at math, but they sure do multiply. Please spay, neuter, and adopt. The solution is 10. Welcome back. The government has raised the debt ceiling more than 100 times since World War II. But now the need has risen again, and that process of familiarity has bred partisan contempt. The U.S. government hit its multi-trillion dollar debt limit in January, forcing the Treasury to take so-called extraordinary measures, like selling investments and putting others off. But if nothing's done before early June, the government could no longer pay all its bills. Yeah, that's right. So that puts the ball in President Joe Biden and newly elected House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's court. I got a big plan. The first question is, does the president want to continue reckless spending or find a way that we could be responsible, sit down, and find common ground where we put ourselves on a path to budget, make a balanced budget? FedEx's CEO announced today that the company plans to cut employees from its ranks of corporate officers and directors. Now, he says that they would cut more than 10% from those ranks, but it's necessary to ensure that the delivery company remains, quote, competitive in a rapidly changing environment. The broad range of salary and hourly staff will not be affected. This announcement comes after a series of broad cost cuts and staffing reductions, all in the face of slowing business and the rising risk of a global recession. Bed Bath & Beyond has announced some sad news to their customers. The furniture and home goods giant is shutting down 87 stores in addition to their 150 closures announced last August. The closures include five Bye Bye Baby locations and the last of their cosmetic stores. This is only the most recent development as the company inches towards bankruptcy. Last week, the company warned it received a notice of a default from its lender, J.P. Morgan Chase. Retail stores are losing their market share to larger chains like Walmart and Target, and Bed Bath & Beyond is well aware. The labor market right now makes the looming threat of a recession sound not so threatening. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the number of job openings right now is the highest it has been since July, with more than 11 million jobs available. Accommodation and food services had the most need, followed by retail and construction. One economist thinks this could be the first recession without significant job losses. 
Well, we've got an upturn in the temperature coming, but we've got a bit of a recession in that going on ahead. I've got the full details in my full forecast after the break. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Emotes say a lot, but they can't say it all. Think your guildmate is struggling? Try these dialogue options. beyond emotes. Check in with your guildmates at seizetheawkward.org. Every day, every day, millions of people are connecting. And even though we're overcoming obstacles, watching each other's backs, and banding together, we should still make an effort. We should still make an effort to get to know each other on a deeper level. Father, cosplayer, mentor, actor, it's time we take a step forward. It's time we take a step forward. Come together. And discover how accepting our differences can make, make us stronger. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. On NewsLink Indiana weather forecaster Ryan Hill with a look at your Wednesday evening weather picture. Certainly somewhat cloudy out there, but we had some clear conditions actually earlier. Something to take, a, take advantage of. That nice ball, that glowing ball in the sky we call the sun, not an often seen thing. But anyway, not too bad right now. The craziest weather is down towards Memphis where you can see some of that pink indicating where we have some icing threats. Gladly none of that here and not too bad a day. We turned out a high of 30 degrees with an average of 37, not too bad. But if you're looking for warmer weather, folks, we'd have to roll it back to 1989, where the high was 63 on this day then. Colder now, 26 in Muncie, cold spots up to the north, 21 in Fort Wayne. Got a pair of 27s at Bloomington and Shelbyville, south of I-70, though. We're going to definitely cool off again, but not as bad as we did yesterday. Recall that 10? We're adding 10 to that. 20 degrees, note that wind southwest at 10 miles an hour. That's part of the, the whole story right there. That's coming on up. And that will help our temperature get all the way to 37, right on for average this time of year, under some breezy conditions and some partly sunny skies. So the, that glowing orb in the sky that's so uncommon this time of year in the Midwest, that's gonna stick around. But I do have some bad news for you, at least for one little bit. We do have a little trough of low pressure that's going to be digging ever so slightly close to our northeastern parts, and that's going to bring in some cooler, cloudy conditions. And that is pretty brisk, actually. This is your feels-like temperature. So as you get yourselves out the door, please dress in layers, hat and mittens. Definitely a must for both Saturday and Sunday morning. But onward from that, we are looking at some promises. Some warmer air up ahead, above average expected as we go beyond our seven day. And even then, take a look at this. Got this ridge of high pressure playing around right here. And that's going to make things oh so much better for our seven day forecast, our mid seven day forecast folks. Looking phenomenal by the time we reach Tuesday. Look at that 49 I have for you. We do have a few chances of rain though. That's the best chance on Tuesday. Kind of some weak isolated showers with a weak system on Sunday, but 
I tell you, folks, are oh, we ready yes. for temperatures 10 degrees above normal? How no, do you feel? I'm not sure, <laughs> especially that Tuesday. Well, oh. hey, thank you so much, Ryan. And yes. up next, we've got a quick tease of sports. Here's, uh, here's a preview. One NFL legend is officially hanging up the cleats, plus several Ball State athletes earn weekly awards. All that and more next in sports. Here's your sandwich, miss. Oh, thank you. And your burger. Awesome, thank you. And your bowl of boiling water, sir. After retiring from the NFL, I've been able to spend a lot more time coaching my daughter's basketball teams. It's something I love to do. Through our games and our tournaments, we see all types of coaching, good and bad. And it begs the question, do we really know who's coaching our kids? Do they have the proper training and screening it would take for me to be comfortable with my daughters playing for that coach? Our Youth Basketball Association made the decision to use trusted coaches to screen and train all of our coaches. I'm a trusted coach. Are you? So if one cat has four kittens who reproduce every six months, how many cats will there be in five years? <coughs> Who's got it? Is this, what is that? <coughs> Seriously. Who threw that? Cats are terrible at math, but they sure do multiply. Please spay, neuter, and adopt. The solution is 10. Welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. I'm Isaiah Rosner with sports. In national news, legendary quarterback Tom Brady says he is retiring after 23 seasons in the NFL. The seven-time Super Bowl champion posted a 53-second video on social media this morning where he announced the news of his retirement. Brady thanks his f family, friends, teammates, and competitors. The 45-year-old initially retired in February of last year, but he returned for one more season as quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Brady played for a total of three years with the Bucs, leading the team to a Super Bowl victory in 2021. He previously spent 20 years with the New England Patriots, leading them to six Super Bowl championships. Ball State women's basketball took on the Northern Illinois Huskies tonight here in Muncie. News News Indiana's Indiana's Andy, Andy Newman, Newman is live inside Worthen Arena to give an update on how the matchup went. Andy, what do you have for us? Thanks, Isaiah. I'm here live on the floor of Worthen Arena as Ball State women's basketball just wrapped up their matchup with the NIU Huskies. Ball State coming into this one 17 and 4 on the year, 6 and 1 in MAC conference play, and an impressive 10 and 0 here at home, looking to improve to 11 and 0. On the flip side of the court, the NIU Huskies coming into this one. 10 and 9 on the year and only 2 and 6 in MAC conference play. So, in desperate need of a MAC win here in Worthen Arena tonight. To pick up action in the first quarter, Ball State going very back and forth with NIU and able to take a one point lead going into the second quarter. It's up 17 to 16. Ball State improving on offense, scoring 25 points in the second quarter and heading into halftime with an uncomfortable lead of 42 to 37 at the half. Coming out of halftime, another tight quarter for Ball State, but able to stay on top again, going 57 to 49 into the fourth quarter. Ball State and NIU very, very back and forth in the final quarter here. Both scoring 19 points. Uh, NIU able to cut the score down to four points, but Ball State proving to be too much for the Huskies and end up winning the game 76-68 to to improve to 11-0 here at home in Worthen Arena. A very impressive feat. and look to improve to 12-0 as they take on Kent State this Saturday here in Worthen Arena at 11 a.m. That's all for me live from Worthen Arena. Andy Newman, NewsLink, Indiana. Thanks, Andy. Taking things over to the pool, two Ball State seniors earned some midseason hardware. After multiple performances this weekend, Owen Che being named MAC Men's Swimmer of the Week and Wyatt Blake earning MAC Men's Diver of the Week. 
This is both of the swimmers' second time receiving these awards this season. Che, Blake, and the rest of the Cardinals will be back in action this Friday when they travel to face off against Valparaiso University. As swim and dive continues to impress, Ball State men's volleyball look to do the same tomorrow night at home. The Cardinals play host to BYU for the first of two matchups with the squad, the second to take place on Saturday. Ball State flies high into the matchup as the eighth ranked team in the country on a four game win streak. On the opposite side of the net, the Cougars come in as the 11th ranked team in the nation with a 5-1 record on the season. The match is set to begin at 7 p.m. And guys, what an exciting start to the season for men's volleyball. Man, this, this you know, a, a chance to prove themselves against a very strong opponent. Volleyball is definitely one of my favorite Ball State um, sports to be able to catch, to be able to see in person. Um, I love our men's team. Yeah. Yeah, wow, and and like you said, such a such an explosive start to the to the uh, to the semester, and a lot going on. We're we're, we're excited to see what happens. Nice. Thanks so much. Well, we'll have your anchor picks after the break. Stick with us. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. like the rules to surviving Zombieland, there are steps you can take to be prepared for an emergency. It's the right thing to do. Talk with your family to make a plan. Look for safe areas to meet up if separated. And stock up on supplies. It's never too early to get prepared. So start now. Right now? Right now. You can't predict emergencies, but you can be ready. You're welcome, America. Visit ready.gov today to learn more. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. An iconic Kobe Bryant Lakers jersey is going up for auction bidding for Bryant's MVP season. That jersey opens tomorrow. Now, it's no pocket change. Sotheby's says that it could sell for $7 million. Bryant wore the jersey 25 times during the 2007-2008 season. Included in the iconic photo where he was screaming in excitement during a playoff game against the Denver Nuggets. The jersey comes with photos, artwork, and books. Bidding ends February 9th. Beehive rejoice because Beyonce will be heading back on tour. Now the megastar announced that the Renaissance World Tour on Instagram uh, on Wednesday, it will feature music from her latest album Renaissance, which has been garnering acclaim since it dropped last summer. Beyonce's official website says the tour will start in Stockholm, Sweden this May. It will wind through Europe and come to Philadelphia in July. The tour will wrap up in New Orleans in September. Now, I, for one, I love Beyonce. I'm excited to see all of the fans that are about to be able to see her for the first time in so long. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Well, hopefully she doesn't hold a concert outside because it's going to be a little cold, uh, especially this That's next true. week. Yes. Well, not too, not too long right now we're going to be looking at temperatures that could be, if you're looking for warm weather, irreplaceable. Look at that 49 by the time we get to Tuesday. Again, 10 degrees above normal. I've signed up for that. Not so much the winter weather lovers, but I mean, I'm kind of starting to look forward to spring, you know, bring on the green trees and whatnot. 
Oh man, it is just like a song. Oh, cannot wait. Well, that's all tonight for Newslink Indiana. Be sure to join us again tomorrow night at 9, streaming live on the Newslink Indiana Facebook page. And for news anytime, anywhere, go to BallStateDaily.com. Have a great night.